there to be dance and so forth. But this appearance of the tree is only a misconception that seems to be superimposed, that seems to conceal the actual tree. We see the misconception of the tree. It seems really to conceal the actual tree itself. Uh, it's as though uh, we're looking right at this tree, but we're not seeing it, not really seeing it at all. We're only seeing our own misconception of it. Now, so long as we seem to see the tree with supposed human vision, it's going to seem to appear to be solid, and it can certainly appear uh, to be uh, imperfect, all sorts of things. Yet the substance, the form and the activity that is the tree can and ultimately does visibilize itself. The substance that really is the tree, not our misconception of it, you see, but the substance that really is the tree can and ultimately does visibilize itself or become visible. Why? Why? In order that it be seen by even so-called, so-called born man. Now, if the tree did not exist, it could never become visible to a sumptive man. But it is, it is visible because the tree does exist and that it can be, that it can visibilize itself even though it appears to be solid, it appears to be dense, it appears to be temporary. It is in this same way that the identity that I am, that you are, the, thus the identical body that I am exists and does ultimately visibilize itself as this very body right here. I assure you this is the truth. This body that is right here has been seen and is seen by innumerable identities. I couldn't tell you how many. The body that is, not a misconception of it, but the body that is right here. And I'm not the only one who has this experience. There are many of us whose bodies, as they really are, are visibilizing themselves. Now this happens because this identical body does exist, and that a body that seems to be solid, that dense, and temporary, and mutable, can be seen even by that which is called human vision. Oh yes. It's because this body that does exist, really does exist, it's here. And it's capable, too, of visibilizing itself. But it is because this body does exist, this one and only body, that it can appear, it can visibilize itself, so that even those who seem to see through a glass darkly can see this body. Now this, beloved, oh, this is infinite love in action. Wasn't it love that visibilized itself as the body of Jesus? Wasn't it a fulfillment of a glorious purpose? Could the one called Jesus have so lovingly fulfilled his purpose if the body of this one had remained invisible? Would we have known of this glorious Christ if his body had never been seen by so-called born man? No, we would not have. We would not have. No, it is for a definite fulfillment of purpose that the eternal body of life, of light, does visibilize itself. Events, even the, the in events, 
and as something that seems to happen, all of this seems to visibilize itself. Yes, this body that appears to be material is really the eternal body of light, of life lovingly fulfilling its purpose in being by being visible or by visibilizing itself. So you see there is a purpose fulfilled even by that which appears to be a born body. Oh, there isn't anything that takes place, even in the seeming, that there isn't a purpose in its taking place or seeming to take place. Now let us go farther in our perception of the significance of this revelation of the word visibilize. That which visibilizes is absolute perfection. That's the principle itself. This is the body of light. This is the universe of light. This is heaven itself. Therefore, that which is visibilized is absolutely perfect. You see, it's because perfection is being visibilized. That that which is visible really has to be absolutely perfect. In short, the genuine and only body that is visibilized is completely, wholly, totally perfect. Every whit whole, as it says in the Bible. Now, that which is absolute perfection can be visib visibilized as absolute perfection. Oh, this is possible. Actually, the visibilization of absolute perfection has to be perfect. Thus, this visible body, even though it appears to be a born body, should by all means be as perfect as is the actual and only body that is being visibilized. We have a right to expect this, you know. But suppose it seems that this appearance of body does appear to be imperfect. Well, the appearance of imperfection can only seem to stem from our misconception of that which is being visibilized. It seems that we believe in a body that is born, that changes, that becomes diseased or imperfect, distorted or something, and finally dies. Well, you see, dear one, our misconception of even the apparent body will reveal just what we expect to see and expect to experience. Now this is the truth. No wonder Jesus said, according to your belief shall it be unto you. But once we know the absolute perfection of that which is being visibilized here, we will expect to see and to experience the perfect appearance of a body to be manifested. Yes, we have a right to expect this, you see. Therefore, as we continue in this awareness, the, even the body that seems to be a material will be evidenced as an appearance of a perfect body. All there is of this apparent body is our concept of what the body is. You know this is the truth? I'm going to say that. Uh, all there is of this apparent body is our concept of what this body is. As our concept of body is more enlightened, even this apparent body is certain to evidence the perfection we are realizing the body to be. This, then, is what they call healing. You know, I love to talk about the universe because when we are 
talking or speaking uh, of the universe. When the consciousness that we are is so very conscious of the universal all, we know that we are completely free from any little limited personal sense of a kind of being that we simply are not. So I love to speak of the universe. Now, this universe, that is the way it seems or appears to be, is infinity only appearing to be finite. It is infinite absolute perfection appearing to be either perfect or imperfect according to the way we're seeing it. It is infinite beauty appearing to be either beautiful or ugly. It is infinite harmony appearing to be either harmonious or inharmonious. It is eternal substance, this universe, in an infinite variety of forms, although it may appear to be a temporary substance in temporary forms. You know, I just don't believe it when they say things about stars and planets coming into being and going out of being. That's their misconception of it. It isn't the way it is. This universe is intangible, appearing as though it were tangible substance in forms. It is inseparable, appearing to be an infinite variety of separate bodies or forms, and the inseparability is its oneness. The oneness is love. And love is God. Yes, the indivisible universe is our indivisible world, our earth planet. And all that is here is one inseparable whole. The love that is God, being all, is the planet earth. And there is no such thing as hatred where love is all and love is all everywhere now let's speak again about something that we often speak about which is the revelator and the revelation now we have said on another tape recording that the revelator and the revelation are one and the same inseparable one yes we are we are both the uh, we are both the revelator and the revelation now let us consider this fact as the i am that we are all right now again beloved this is you this is the consciousness that you are speaking as just what you are. I am the revelation. I am the absolute truth, every absolute truth that has been and will continue to be revealed. The only identity that I am is the infinite absolute truth that I am revealed, identified, and evidenced right here, right now. The only being that I am or can be is the conscious absolute perfection that I am being and being ever perfect. The only evidence that I exist is the infinite, conscious, absolute truth, perfection that I am evidenced or concretized right here and right now. Oh yes, the revelation. Absolute perfection is concrete being this came through one afternoon and it was a glorious thing 
And I simply did not like to accept, accept it because I did not like that word concrete. It sounded like something very, very solid indeed. But ultimately, I had to go to the dictionary and look up this word. And then the definition, I wish you'd do this, if you have a Webster's unabridged dictionary, and you'll be amazed at what that word concrete means. So, uh, uh, absolute perfection is concrete existence, manifestation. Apparent imperfection is not the evidence that I am or that I exist. How could imperfection be the evidence that I exist? Therefore, I cannot know nor can I be imperfect evidence. I cannot be nor can I be conscious of being the evidence of that which I am not or of that which I am not conscious of being. I am infinite, immutable, constant perfection right here and right now. I am conscious of being infinite, eternal, immutable, constant, absolute perfection. I am conscious of being both the infinite and the infinitesimal, both boundless and yet specific. I am the constant evidence of the infinite, eternal, immutable, absolute perfection that I am. I am the evidence, you see and that I am conscious of being that which I see, I really be. I seeing am I being. And being that which I see, there is but one infinite, indivisible I or identity, and every I is that I, that is the I that I am. And now in great illumination, I, constant eternal absolute perfection, do not nor can I form the absolute perfection that I am into imperfect changing or incomplete forms. I, being constant, eternal, ever-living substance, do not form the eternal, ever-living substance that I am into temporary forms. I cannot ever experience a revelation of imperfection, for there is no imperfection to be revealed. All that I am all that anyone can be is God's revelation. It is all God, God. Absolute, constant, complete perfection, revealing himself as just what God is. There is nothing but God to be revealed. This is why there can be no evidence of imperfection, of inharmony, of age, of sickness or pain or of trouble or of anything other than the absolute perfection which is God. I am that. God, the infinite all that I am, is ever revealing the eternal constant perfection that God is. Thus, the I that I am. The revelation is the manifestation of that which is revealed. The revelation is the evidence, and the evidence is the revelation. All experience is revelatory because every experience is God. The I that I am revealing itself. All that I can consciously experience is revelation. The revelation, the experience,
experience and the evidence are one and the same thing. Even though it has seemed that I walked in darkness for a little moment, I now see and know that I am all light, all light. Never was the darkness the light that I am. Always it has been. Always it will be the light that I am and that everyone is just shining through. Oh, yes, shining through even what seems to be the darkness. Yes, my seeming hell, as it says in the Bible, was but heaven shining through. I am the light that shineth in darkness, seeming ignorance or unawareness of the allness, the onlyness that is God. The seeming darkness does not understand the light. How can it? when it is nothing, when it can understand nothing. Being non-existent, it cannot know or understand anything at all. But I, the living mind that is all knowledge, do understand. Oh, I do completely. I do comprehend the light that I am, the light that lighteth every man the light that every man is. This is truth. You know, beloved, when you are so aware that there is one I, one infinite I, uh, I that ever can be identified, it seems to be very, very natural to speak as I am, though in the words that are I am, is in the, it's because you recognize that everyone in existence is the one I identified, and you are speaking as the whole universe, and yet you know that anyone, no matter uh, whom, uh, might wish to speak in this way, it would be uh, just as wonderful as it is for you to speak in this way, because when anyone spoke in the words, I am, that one, knowing what, what you're knowing or what I'm knowing, uh, would simply be speaking as the consciousness that I am, just the same as speaking as his own consciousness. So I, uh, just, I love to speak in the words that I am, but you will understand this certainly is not a thing of, uh, uh, <laughs> well, there's no little I pretending to be something here. Now, the next is an I am contemplation titled, The Two Are One. There are not two of the I that I am, One of them, the uncreated infinite beings, substance, intelligent life, love, and another who is a born, limited, confined, temporary substance, a born life, a born mind, a born love. You know, so many of us uh, seem to get hung up on this thing of it seeming to be true. This is true. And this will continue to be true just so long as we continue to permit any duality to interfere with our full and complete awareness of being one and one alone. There is no difference between the intelligence, that is, the all-knowledge, that I am, and the intelligence that is active in our daily affairs, the substance which lives, moves, and breathes right here, 
as you, this moment, is the one uncreated substance fulfilling its purpose as the I am that you are. Now, if you walk, it is this one uncreated substance in form that fulfills its purpose, its specific purpose of walking. Now, since this substance is mind, is intelligence, it fulfills its purpose intelligently. You simply cannot be one mind that is all knowledge and another so-called born limited mind that can sometimes seem to be stupid, make mistakes, forget, and so forth. No, you're not a mind that was born as or into a brain, not at all. Rather, you are the one infinite, all-knowing mind that comprises all that is called a brain. <laughs> I once said, if there is such a thing as a brain here, it is but a focalization of all the knowledge there is of infinite intelligence. All that you are, the one, infinite conscious mind or intelligence that you are, is the substance, the form and the activity which comprises that which is called the brain. But this intelligence is not limited to the so-called brain. It would be a sad thing if it were, wouldn't it? If that could be true, we'd only know, we wouldn't know anything other than just a, a tiny little dot up here in the head somewhere <laughs> called a brain. No, you can't be duped. You cannot be deceived. You cannot be compelled to know imperfection. You cannot be compelled to know trouble and harmony or incompleteness or anything that the one infinite absolute perfect mind does not and simply cannot know. Even if that which is called the brain does or should send messages to various aspects of the body, these messages would have to convey the glad tidings of absolute perfection. That which is called the brain is only the infinite, all-knowing, perfect mind, as I said a few moments ago, focalized right here and now. Nonetheless, it is well to know that infinite intelligence is focalized everywhere. Mind is omnipresence. I'm going to say that again. Mind is omnipresence. So, if there is something called a brain here, it has to consist of perfect, all-knowing mind, knowing only perfection. And if something called a brain does act, it has to act intelligently. <laughs> How else could it act? Thus, it has to act perfectly. In like manner, vision is one. Just There is just one vision. Infinitude is vision. There are not two visions. There is but one, and this one uncreated whole entire vision is the substance, the form, and the activity of, of the only eyes that are. Yes, the only eyes that exist consist of vision itself, the same as the only brain that exists consists of mind, don't you see? Yes, vision is one. There are not two bodies here. 
There is no such thing as an eternal, uncreated, ever-present, changeless body here, and yet another body that was born. There cannot be two. That must become mature, then must become ill, must change, must age, and must finally die. Oh, where is the love in that? There is but one body here. The body that seems to be seen here is not the way it appears to be at all. But this body that is imperfectly seen really is the one and only uncreated body, ever perfect, changeless, and eternal. It consists entirely of ever, ever enduring, immutable, eternal substance, which is God infinity. Seeming imperfection does not exist in or as this eternal body. Rather, we just mistakenly seem to see what appears to be a temporary body, but never mind. No matter how mistaken we may seem to be, the body goes right on, constantly and eternally, being the beautiful, absolute perfection that it forever is. Form is the activity of infinite, absolute perfection. Light, beauty, constantly forming itself into and as countless forms but the form of any identity or anything never changes. Absolute perfection must of necessity form itself into or as perfect form, perfect beauty, perfect symmetry and grace. We read in the Bible, Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. Now that's Deuteronomy, 30th verse, and you'll find it in the 19th, or 20, 30th chapter, rather. You'll find it in the verses of 19 and 20. And then, uh, I quote now, Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord. Wherefore turn you, turn yourselves, and live ye. Now this is from the 19th chapter of Ezekiel verses 31 and 32. Yes, this day we must choose. You know this is the only cho a choice we have. We have no other choice. We must choose. Either God is all or God is not all. Beloved, we can't have it both ways. We just can't. We cannot have it both ways. We are not responsible, of course, for the life or even the well-being uh, uh, of anyone else. We're not responsible for the life or the accepted death of anyone. But you know, we are responsible for that which we accept as truth or fact. It's up to us. It really is. To choose God and only God is to choose life eternal. You know, it says, choose ye this day. All right. To choose only God is to choose life eternal. For God is life eternal. To choose to believe in any presence, 
aside from God is very bad indeed. To choose to believe in any power or activity other than God is to choose death. That's the fact. To believe in death is to deny God, for is God not eternal life? To believe in birth is to believe in death. Thus, to believe in birth is to choose death rather than life, God. Yes, choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. To choose the death called birth is to choose the Adam way, the Adam way. To choose the birthless, uncreated, eternal life is to choose the Christ way, the Christ way. Now, let us here experience what we will call at the moment a manifesto. I hereby denounce and renounce the Adam way of birth and death. I hereby acknowledge, accept, and believe only in the Christ way of eternal, uncreated, birthless, deathless life. God is all. All is God. I hereby denounce and renounce man with breath in his nostrils as the creator of man or as the creation of man. I hereby renounce anything other than God being all. I hereby announce my acknowledgement, acceptance, and belief in only the eternal uncreated birthless Christ, which is God being eternal man. God is all, all is God. I hereby denounce and renounce a kind of body that was supposed to be conceived and born of the Adam dream man. I do not acknowledge or nor do I accept or believe in a barn body that must mature, become imperfect, ill, decrepit, age, and die. I acknowledge, accept, and believe only the existence of the eternal, birthless, changeless, ever-perfect, ageless body of the Christ or the Christ body. God is all. All is God. Jesus said, according to your belief shall it be unto you. Yes, if we acknowledge, accept, and believe in a born or created body, we are going to experience all of the assumed laws or beliefs pertaining to this obnoxious kind of body. Change, maturity, age, decrepitude, and finally disintegration, death. But we do not have to choose this kind of body. What compels us to? Who compels us to? We are not compelled to choose birth and death and all that lies between. This day we can choose to accept or to reject eternal, birthless, changeless, deathless life, consciousness, mind, love, God. The Christ being man and this everlasting, ever-perfect, immutable Christ body or the body of the Christ man that we are 
This we can accept. Yes, according to what we choose to accept, to acknowledge and to believe, shall it be unto us. I am the eternal now. We know that we are boundless infinity and omnipresent. And we are unconfined, unlimited, and unrestricted by that which is called space or its assumed boundaries. We do not travel out into something called space in order to be consciously focalized wherever and whenever our presence is the fulfillment of a purpose. Now we have realized that infinity and eternity are one. Thus it is. Thus we are. Now This next is very important, I feel. What I knew, this is you, this is the I that you are, the I that I am. What I knew before I seemed to be born and seemed to become of a, a material world, I know now. What I did not know before I appeared to be born, I do not know now what I was conscious of being before I seemed to be born, before I seemed to be involved in a material world, I am conscious of being now. What I was not conscious of being before I seemed to be born, and seem to be caught up in a material world I am not conscious of being now. What I was experiencing before the world appeared, I am experiencing now. What I was not experiencing before the world appeared, I am not experiencing now. The world of appearance is very much like a dream about the genuine world. That is, all that is genuine of the seeming dream is the actual existence which the dream was about. That which is real evidences or visualizes itself in and as that which is seen and experienced here and now. Why, it is almost as though the genuine shines right through the dream. It is only our misinterpretation of that which we actually see and experience that seems to delude us. Yes, this right here is heaven. And at any moment, our eyes may be opened. Oh, yes. You recall this, uh, the, uh, the prophet saying, Open his eyes that he may see. Oh, yes. At any moment, our eyes may be opened, and we may see and experience the heaven that is, rather than the seeming hell that is not. Always we are in heaven because always we are heaven. I hope you enjoy this spiritual audio. 
like, share and subscribe for more.